Last year my flip-flops broke, and it's pool season, so I went to buy some new flip-flops, and I found these. But this strap is so wide, from the front to the back, that they neither flip nor flop. Now this may look a bit chaotic, and you may not be able to understand exactly what's going on here, but I have a system. This pair of shoes is in phase one. I only wear them if I'm going to be indoors or on concrete the entire time. No dirt. These don't take much wear before they move on to phase two. In phase two, I wear them outdoors and where they might get dusty, but I need thorough support for my feet if I go out to walk or run for exercise. When these are very thoroughly worn, I move on to phase three, where I wear them around the house when they can get dirty and I don't need to worry about what they look like. It was a bit of an initial investment getting three pairs of the same shoes, but in the long run, this will save me a lot of money and get me the most use out of each pair. Ah, uh, it has just been homework and job work for the past couple of weeks. Haven't gotten to do much out here. I am taking a couple of college classes for the summer and because it's a shorter semester, they crammed into four weeks each. So it's basically like an ordinary semester, except that it's online, which is not fun. But I finally have time to cut this thing up today. It is uh, dry. Now here's the thing that I noticed just now. Well, not just now, two days ago. The this side of it is full of holes, so I, when I cut it, I'm going to have to be very careful to try to cut where the holes are not so that we have a nice uh, surface for the front of the artwork that we're making. I can't even tell what these are. I guess they're nail holes, but I don't understand why there are so many holes in it. Uh, we also have the, these nails here and a nail here and the chain over here, so we got to watch out for all that make sure we don't hit anything. Hopefully this will give us enough blocks to make the whole thing. I don't think I'm gonna sand this one. Not on the sides anyway. What is all this green stuff? It's like, it might be moss, I guess. Dude, check this out. Freaked me out for a second. Over here in this bucket. It's a cockroach. Ooh, better yet. It's a cockroach with a spider above it. I don't see a lot of cockroaches around here, which is why it threw me off. I was like, what is that? He's all dusty. He's probably been in there for a while. I was looking for a stiff bristle brush. I can't find one. I guess this uh, broom will have to do. Oh yeah, that's knocking off a lot of that moss. Let's be clear, moss is cool, but I don't want it falling off in my room. I do hope this thing looks as good on the inside as it looks on the outside. Yeah, it looks nice. It smells weird. I cut open this bit, this one piece of wood. I think it was actually the twisty one that I showed in the last vlog, and it uh, it smelled like biscuits, buttery biscuits. It was wet. It was green at the time, and uh, since then I have cut more on it, and it now tastes like dry biscuits. <laughs> it doesn't taste like it. It smells like them, but it used to smell buttery, which is weird. Last thing I need is to get a metal chain caught in my saw. I kind of like to do something different with the top of this post, but I don't know what to do with it. Look at it. It's like the grain is just, that is just the coolest thing ever. The problem is the very top has this one weird knot, which doesn't look, I don't know, it looks like bird poop, but it's not. It looks nice. It's dark for some reason. It's a really dark color. I don't know if that'll change after I sand it or not. Probably not. It has these places that look burnt and they seem to be connected to the cracks on the outsides. It's really weird. But this will give us some variation in the shading. I mean, these other blocks, they will get darker after I oil them, but uh, I imagine this will as well. Ah, I really don't want to cut it though. Look at this. Look, look at that. Maybe I should cut a cube. So like that. And then this will be the front face of this block. I like these pliers. It's sort of multi-tool pliers. I think my uncle found it at the park and gave it to me. Uh, I like it because it's on this sliding track like this. So whenever I go to use it, I just... It's very satisfying. Okay, I've got to try. I have to try this. And, I mean, worst case scenario, if it doesn't work out, if it doesn't look good, and or if I don't have enough blocks, then I'll just slice it in half and use it the regular way. When you're cutting a precise width, you want to make sure your 
blade is on the outside. The blade width is something to take into consideration. So that's not too much bigger than the um, the longest blocks. Okay, here we go. I have cut the thing. We have enough blocks now. I have cut some, actually all of the um, the ones that I was going to use the side on. I've cut them down because they were way too thick. We don't want them to be that tall. And then what we're going to end up with is 11 rows instead of 12, which is fine because I would have been okay with 10 most likely. But in order to make that happen, we had to take some of the taller blocks and cut them into two or three pieces. The problem is these, and especially this one, they were too short to safely cut because I have to be able to hold on to it. I don't want my fingers that close to the blade. So what I've done is I have glued them onto these with just enough glue to hold them in place so that I have something to hold on to while cutting them. And then we will uh, break them off and sand off the glue or just not use the side that the glue is on. That can be the back that goes onto the backing of the panel. Now this one right here, I tried to cut, even though it was too short, I tried to cut it just by not touching it and letting it sit there, but it was too, it like fit between here just enough and it moved around. So what ended up happening is it moved and it got cut crooked. I don't know if you can tell, that's not straight. So basically I'm just going to have to glue these to those boards and uh, do them again. But look at that, that looks awesome. I'm really glad I chose to cut this one open. So I just need to get two out of this one, so I'll just cut it in half. And then let's see if we can just pop this off of here. Nope, that is very strong glue. Wow. Gorilla glue, wood glue. I don't want to break the block, so I'm just going to cut it off. And I need three out of this one. On both of the ones that I cut off, where they were glued, I ended up with this right here. I'll either sand it or glue that side to the panel. Now I will glue these last two onto the same blocks. Probably use a little bit less glue, see if I can get away without um, having to saw through them. Cutting these things open is like a treasure hunt. You never know what you're gonna find when you open them up. Oh, you know what? I forgot to show you this. On one of the blocks, I forgot a nail. I missed it. And my saw blade did not care at all. It just went right through it. Where is it? Right here, I cut through it one time. You can see the head of the nail there and the shiny parts where it cut through. And I was like, oh, there's a nail. Well, I cut through it, okay. But it did not occur to me that the nail might be angled hard enough that I would end up cutting through it again on the next cut, so there's that right there. I don't know if I should get another block and replace this or just use it like this. Use this side. It's kind of cool. There's another one somewhere where I accidentally um, cut right through a nail hole from a nail that had been removed. It actually had this gross yellow gunk in it. I don't know if it was fungus or what, but uh, look, it just perfectly bisected the nail hole. It, it wasn't off or anything. It's not off-center. It's just perfect. So I might use that, I might not. Again, I can just use the other side if I have to. While I'm waiting for that glue to dry, I am going to go ahead and sand the um, the two that have this weird bit on them, and then uh, I'm gonna switch to um, finer sandpaper and sand the surfaces of all of these blocks. to remove the entire part that's not even but without losing more of the block than I need to. I was able to pop those two off uh, without having to cut through the glue so I didn't end up with that weird bad cut. These might be my favorite two blocks in the whole thing. All right, now this is a bit of a mess so I'm gonna sort these out, make sure I know exactly how many I have so that I know which ones I'm using and which ones I'm not. And then I'm going to switch to a finer grit for this to give me a fine finish on the face of all of these blocks and get to work. You know, if I would empty this uh, dust bag on the back of the saw once in a while, that would probably prevent a lot of sawdust from getting all over everything. My saw needs to go poo poo. Okay, so I dusted it off a bit. I have all these sorted into stacks of six. These are not the way they're going to be in rows. This is just so I can keep track of them and know what I've done and what I haven't. Uh, this one, I was thinking about uh, sanding it down a bit more and you showing 
the head of the nail, but I don't think that would look quite as good as I imagined. So I'm cutting the head of the nail off because it sticks off from the edge and I need that out of the way. I am going to show this side. I did think about not doing that, but I mean, it's aged wood, it's old wood, it has history, and this is part of it. And so is this. I say history as if it's been through some uh, fantastic historical event, but uh, I mean, it's just, go with it. The heat from cutting the head of this nail right here transferred all the way through the nail down to right here and I touched that with my finger and it burned me. All right, let's do this. There's not gonna be a perfect finish on all of these. There is a little bit of a, um, little bit of lines from the sander, but uh, I would have to sand this manually to get it any cleaner. I might do it a little bit, but uh, mainly, you'd really want to use an orbital sander for that, and I don't have one. Dude, my ears. I was wearing uh, headphones all that time, but still. I have a glove on this one because uh, part of it wanted to splinter off so I glued it and now I'm using the glove as a rubber band to hold it together until that dries. Can I just get a job where I just get to stare at wood cross sections all day because this is really awesome. All of these are sanded on one side now. I picked my favorite side of each one, sanded it, and basically now at some point I'm going to have to take a uh, toothbrush and just brush all the dust out of the cracks and off of the sides. I will have to cut the boards again. The, the backing boards, these right here, I cut them for 6 by 12. So I'm gonna have to cut those down to 6 by 11. And then I can arrange these in the order that I like them. Take my time, make sure I do it right. Then I would really love to be able to, you know, screw them on. I hate putting things together primarily with glue. But uh, because these are old, specifically old boards that I chose, they would crack and split and stuff if I tried to put screws into them. Even if I pre-drilled, I wouldn't want to risk that. So we're going to be mostly using glue to hold this whole thing together. But look at this. Look at... I don't know if it looks as good on camera as it does in real life, but it's really awesome. And just wait till we put oil on it. That just takes everything and... Boom. You know what, let's do it now. Let's have a little sneak peek. Here we go, here's a good couple of samples. This lighting is not really... Anytime I make something, often people will ask me, like the first question they'll ask is, are you gonna stain it? Or they'll say you should stain it. There will probably be times when I will need to stain things, but as much as possible, I like to use just clear mineral oil because the, instead of adding artificial colors, that just keeps the natural color of the wood uh, wood lightens up when it dries, so this brings back the color of the wood. Here we go. Just add a little bit. Oh man, look at the colors pop. I'll just spread that around with the sponge. Now this is end grain. Wow, look at that. Look at that shape. That is weird. Uh, this is end grain, of course, and the end grain of wood tends to soak up a lot of oil very quickly. So I'm going to have to apply a lot of oil to all of these, uh, you know, a few coats at a time until they stop soaking it up. The center of the grain, the center of the whatever, is really popping, really bright yellow. It is now 1.30 a.m. so I think it's time for me to call it a night. If you've ever wondered what I do for a living, I work for an online magazine company shuffling numbers like this. I'm in charge of all the statistical stuff related to how many people look at our website and our magazine. Right now I'm working on my presentation for next month's meeting. I am also in charge of putting a lot of what goes onto our website onto our website. One of my titles is Webmaster. 
That sounds awesome. I've been working there for about five years, I guess. If all goes well, then when all these blocks are filled in about a year from now, I will be graduating from college and getting a higher paying job. It's been a few days since I cut these, and last night I went through and very carefully and meticulously dusted them, dusted in all the cracks, get a lot more of that grime off of the outside. And then I brought them in here because the workshop is very dusty and a lot of dust is just in the air and settling on things for obvious reasons. And now I have some work to do, but after that I get to arrange them on this board. It's actually two boards because these are also scrap wood. They're leftovers from when we did our kitchen walls. One row of the blocks is going to end up bridging the gap between these two boards and I'm hoping that those with the glue will hold everything together temporarily while I build a frame for this thing. After I glue them, it'll be time to start oiling them. I'm gonna need a lot of oil obviously. I think this will be enough. This is one gallon of mineral oil. I'm trying really hard to buy things in bulk when I can if it's cheaper and to buy uh, nice things that will last a lot longer if I can, like in general, with the shoes that I was talking about earlier. Obviously I am a college student and I can't always afford that, but I feel like a lot of people, they get into this cycle, like they start off wrong by buying cheap things and then all of those things break and they have to continue to replace those things and so they can never afford to buy anything nice because they need their money to replace the cheap things that they bought before. Does that make any sense at all? I'm hoping that I can not get into that cycle and just spend my money on nice things to begin with and then not have to replace anything almost ever. That doesn't really apply to the oil. It's a similar concept. The bottle of oil that I was using up to now was maybe a little bit bigger than this and it cost ten dollars and then there's this gallon jug that you can get on Amazon for twenty dollars. So a little bit more to spend, but it will last me a lot longer before I have to buy more. I guess my point is that I'm trying to take the option that has the best long-term value every time from the beginning, even though I'm a college student. I just want to get off on the right foot. Thank you for joining me and welcome back to Ribbon. Kiwi banana flavor, watermelon flavor. Not from my end, it's not my problem anymore. If you're having problems, it's your fault. And I mean Skittles, because I deserve Skittles. I was just right here. Is this not where I was? I don't remember there being this many walkways. Philip knows. Philip knows what it's all about. Yeah, I don't, me either. I don't remember that bridge being there. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so that's it. Why is this closed though? I thought I had all of these open. I have a real problem with Skittles. Once I start, I can't stop eating them. That was a lot of fun. I am glad I got to do a live stream last night. It's been a long time since I got to stream a game. I arranged all of these blocks. They are now laid out on top of the backing board, but there's a problem. This thing is ridiculously... Re ah. It's ridiculously heavy. I want to hang it up here on the wall to replace the poster that was in this frame. I just got bored of it. But if I want the wall to be able to support this thing, I need to take a lot of the weight off. I think what I'm going to end up doing is taking most of these blocks and gluing the back side of them to a post, cutting them to to make them thinner, arranging them again. That's gonna take a lot of time, obviously. So I think what I'm gonna do is just take it very slow, take my time, do it one row at a time, because I can only glue so many at once anyway. So I'll just take maybe one row of six blocks, glue them, cut them, put them back, and then grab the next row. On top of that, some of them have developed these spots. I don't know what that is. I mean, obviously it looks like something was spilled on it, but it is not mineral oil. Look at this one. This one's been oiled and it has the dark spots too. They seem to have appeared while all the blocks were stacked up, so I don't really understand that. I was slightly concerned that cutting them shorter would create a problem where you could see the backing board through them, and that probably will be a problem. You'll be able to see a little bit in the gap uh, on the edges of the jagged ones and in the cracks. So I have bought a couple of bottles of black paint. This should be enough. It only cost me two bucks. Or maybe, actually, I think it was only a dollar, 50 cents each. work they asked me to make a class, a video class on how to use Microsoft Word. I don't think they quite understood how qualified I was for that task. I'm taking a short break from my main wood project right now, partly because I'm busy and partly because I had something else I needed to work on. My baby niece was born uh, a week or two ago and I told my sister that I was going to make something for her bedroom and I didn't get around to it because I was busy with the other things. So I'm working on that now. Basically, I found this big uh, six by six post thing 
remnant left over and I have taken it and cut it into shorter segments and each segment is cut at an angle. I don't know how well that shows up on screen. But I'm going to take some paint and paint a border around the edge and then a capital letter so it'll look like, you know, classic wooden blocks with letters on them and it will spell out her name and they're cut at an angle so that when they're all up against each other it looks like giant blocks stacked up and then this will hang on her wall. There we go, that's a real good angle on on the angles. Look at the angles from that angle. <laughs> I'm so funny. Almost every day I come out here and I stretch and then I ride this exercise bike for a half hour to 45 minutes and I alternate the bike with doing two or three sets of 100 crunches. I've been doing that ever since the college went online in uh, February or March and since then it's just gotten easier and easier. It's very very easy now. I could do this all day. So that's good, right? No, it's bad, because when it's easy, I'm not burning any calories. This is the resistance knob. The farther you turn it to the right, the harder it gets to pedal. I have it turned up just a little bit farther than it looks like it's actually supposed to go. It doesn't go any farther than this. The easier your workouts get, the harder it gets to get a workout. In August, when the college goes back on campus, then I'll just switch to running on the trail every day. If you haven't been to my house, you might be wondering why I don't just do that here. My yard looks like this. The whole yard is just a big series of hills. Right now, I can't really, you know, bring myself to take the time out of my day to drive somewhere every day just to exercise. 